In this segment, I will discuss how to resolve customers' objections. Before we begin, if you have not done so already, please download the documents that go with this segment. As a sales consultant, one of the things you do every day is to deal with objections from your customers during the sales process. In this video, I will give you some skills and tools to help you resolve these objections and not only close more sales, but also make more gross profit and do it with higher customer satisfaction. I would like to begin by asking if you notice something about the title to this video. Most of you probably think the title should be Overcoming Objections. I did not use the word overcoming. Instead, I used resolving. Now, you may think it does not matter which word is used. I disagree. The words we choose make a big difference in what we communicate to the customer, even when we are not using the words directly with a customer. I go over this in great detail in the presence video. So, if you would like to know more about word choice, please watch that video segment. Now, back to overcoming versus resolving. What do you think of when you hear the word overcome? Do words like defeat, knockdown, prevails, or win come to mind? You should not be thinking of defeating your customer when they raise an objection. It is this mindset that will make you do and say things that are not customer focused. When you believe you need to win when your customer brings up an objection, then you start putting yourself first. In any contest that you want to win, it is never about the other person. It is all about what you need to do to win. Have you ever sold anything by winning an argument with your customer? When you are with a customer, even if they object to something, it is still all about them. Therefore, you would be better served by using the word resolve. Using this word will put you in a frame of mind to try and create a win-win resolution. In a win-win, both parties are happy with the outcome. For example, if you were asked to resolve a customer objection rather than overcome it, you would probably carefully inspect it to understand it. By doing this, you are acting in a customer-focused manner. The word overcome is usually associated with aggression and can shut down communication. So, try and resolve customer objections, not overcome them. Think about how you currently try and resolve customer objections. Many sales consultants try and avoid objections. As I mentioned in the feature and benefit video, when you say to your customer, follow me, because you want them to go take a test drive, you are actually trying to avoid hearing an objection. Whenever you use a trick to get the customer to move along the sales process, then you are trying to avoid having an objection come up. Another way sales consultants handle objections is to ignore them. For example, a customer says, the price is too high, and you respond with, how important is quality? When a customer asks about price, you should talk about their price concern. As I mentioned earlier, it is all about the customer, not you. So, if a customer asks you what the payments on a vehicle would be, do not say, Speaking of payments, though, that reminds me, were you looking for basic transportation or something a little nicer with more equipment? When a customer asks a direct question, they expect a direct answer. Ignoring a customer's objection will not increase your sales, gross profit, or especially your CSI scores. A favorite phrase that sales consultants use in dealing with objections is to say, if I could, would you? There are several problems with this phrase. First, it puts the sales consultant's interest ahead of the customer's. It shows them that you are only interested in the sale. Second, the only place to go with this is to lower your price. Because you don't say, if I could sell you this vehicle over MSRP, would you buy it? No, you say, if I could sell you this vehicle at X, would you buy it? We all know X is below MSRP. And when the customer says no, you are now forced to go lower than X. Not only are you losing gross profit, but you are also increasing the customer's anxiety and reducing their trust. Not a good recipe for success. Another way you try and resolve customers' objections is to assume you know the reason for the objection, and so you go into a features and benefits discussion. 
We all know what happens when you assume something. Many sales consultants only know one way to resolve customer objections, and that is to reduce the price. Just know this, if you sell on price, you had better be the cheapest and hope that cheap price is the number one customer criteria. Today's customers, while price sensitive, do not buy on price alone. That's why a Camry is the best selling car in America, even though it is not the cheapest. All of these ways of resolving customer objections reflect a view of selling as persuading, convincing, or telling. Wouldn't it be better to respond to a customer that says, I'm not crazy about that color with what is it about the color you don't like instead of if I could lower the price by $500 would you buy it today resolving customer objections is not about losing or lowering your price it's about helping your customer find the best vehicle for them and then showing them why your vehicle is worth what you're asking for it let me repeat that resolving customer objections is about helping your customer find the best vehicle for them and then showing them why your vehicle is worth what you are asking for it. This will increase your sales, your gross profit and do it while increasing your customer satisfaction scores as well. Let's start talking about how to do this. Resolving a customer objection does not start when the customer objects. The information you need to resolve an objection you must gather well before the customer objects. Throughout the sales process the customer is giving you all the information you will need to resolve their concern. However, you need to be listening and asking questions. In the questioning skills and listening techniques video I discuss what you need to do and say to get this information. When the customer does give you an objection you should listen in order to ask questions not to answer. Make sure you understand what the objection is and why they have it. In addition, you should try and anticipate objections. You probably have heard all of them before. Therefore, you should have an idea of how to respond to them. Perhaps the most important thing you need to understand as it relates to objections is the difference between objections and reasons. You cannot resolve objections. Objections like price is too high, that's not enough for my trade, or that payment is too high, cannot be resolved. What can be resolved are the reasons behind the objection. For every objection a customer has, there is at least one reason behind it. Sometimes there is more than one reason. It is your job to find out what the reason or reasons are. A customer who says that the payment is too high may be concerned that the payment doesn't fit their budget. Or maybe he saw it advertised lower someplace else. Or maybe he needs his wife to look at it. Now, I can resolve these three reasons. I cannot resolve the objection. You need to uncover the reasons for the objection. Keep in mind, there might be more than one reason. I am sure you have all had situations where you thought you resolved an objection only to have the customer not buy the vehicle. Chances are it was because you only resolved one of their reasons and there were others. Objections are your chance to get to the nitty gritty and learn more to build your credibility, build partnership and eventually close. The key is to make sure you understand and are working on the reason, not the objection. In order to resolve your customers objections you must do a couple of things. First, you need to acknowledge the objection without increasing your customers anxiety. As I talked about in the consultative selling video, you always want to be increasing your customers trust and reducing their anxiety. When a customer gives you an objection, their anxiety is going up. What you say after their objection will determine if their anxiety will continue to go up, stay the same or go down. Asking the customer why they feel a certain way will only increase anxiety, as does any of the current ways I mentioned earlier that we use to resolve customer objections. Therefore, you need a better way. You need something better to say when a customer objects. Here's what you can say. Mr. Jones, if you do not see the value in what we have to offer, I would never expect you to take advantage of it. Fair enough? Now, there are several ways you can say this. 
But I would like you to note a few things. First, I told the customer that there is some value in what we are offering. And if he did not see it, he would not have to take advantage of it. So he could leave. I ended with a question. Fair enough? Once the customer says yes, then they have just given me permission to continue the conversation. Now, provided you use these words in the correct tone of voice, my guess is that the customer's anxiety stopped going up. You must not get defensive when a customer gives you an objection. You should very calmly state what I just said. In your handouts, there is other wordings for this. I'm sure you can think of some as well. Once the customer agrees to your statement, then you can start asking questions to determine the reasons behind the objection. When determining the reason for the objection, you will need to use the skills that we have gone over in all of the skills videos. You will use questioning skills to determine what the reasons are, and then you will use questioning skills to understand the reason. I like to start with a question like, what makes you uncomfortable with our price or payment or whatever the objection happened to be? This will get the customer to start to explain the reasons behind the objection. You will need to keep asking questions to determine what the reasons are. Do not try and resolve the reasons until the customer has told you all of the reasons. Once you have all the reasons, you can then start to resolve them. I would like to show you a role play of me resolving a customer objection. Good news, Michael. My manager has informed me that the price of the GS is $42,000. I think that's a little high. I think you can do a little better than that. Well, Michael, if you're uncomfortable with the price that we're offering you, then I would never expect you to take advantage of it. Fair enough? Yes. So what makes you uncomfortable with $42,000? I've seen it less than that in the paper. Okay. Is there a particular ad that you saw? I saw an ad in the Standard Star within the last week. In Standard Star? Yes. Okay. And you said it was in the, within the last week? Within the last week. Okay. Do you remember which dealer it was? Um, no, it was another local dealer. And I think to add, it was a GS, I think it was for 40000 For 40000 okay. Do you remember which equipment was on it and what packages? No, I don't recall. Okay. Well, I, I happen, I keep old ads. Yes. Of, so if, and I think I have over here, actually, this is last Saturday's paper. Do you remember if that was the? Yeah, it was within the last week. It might have been Saturday, but okay. let's, let's take a look. Let me see here. Okay. Is this, does this look like the ad? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, here now, it is here. All right. So $40,000. Well. Now, if you look here, okay, let me see what it has in it. All right, well, this, according to this, based on the MSRP that I see here, this package is actually the lower package okay. than the one that you wanted. All right, so, so that one has a sport package and this one doesn't. Correct. Now, if you want us to go and look at a different package, I can work up numbers on that one. No, I, I like the equipment in the sport package. Okay, so the 42000 Sure, I understand. Great. All right. In this role play, you should have noticed a few things. First, I said to the customer, if you are uncomfortable with this price, I would never expect you to take advantage of it. Is that fair? Once again, this was done to help reduce the customer's anxiety and increase his trust. Second, I said to the customer, what made you come to the conclusion that our price is too high? Notice, I did not say, why do you feel the price is too high? The word why can put the customer on the defensive and increase his anxiety. By saying what I said, I was able to determine that the reason behind the price objection was that the customer saw a cheaper price in the paper. Next, once I uncovered the reason for the objection, I asked questions to get information that would help me to resolve that reason. You should know how to resolve the reasons that customers give for their objections. Therefore, your question should be geared toward getting the information to help you resolve that reason. For example, when this customer told me that he saw a cheaper price in the paper, I knew that chances were the ad was for a model with less equipment. So I asked questions with this in mind. Ultimately, I was able to show the customer that that was the case. Now, in this scenario, the customer only had one reason for the objection. In some cases, a customer will have more than one. When a customer has more than one reason, you need to find out all the reasons before you start to resolve any of them. Let's take a look at this in a role play. Great news, Michael. My manager has informed me that the payments on the GS would be five eighty-five a month. Wow, that price is a little bit high. Well, Michael, if you don't see the value in what we're offering you, we would never expect you to take advantage of it. Fair enough? I appreciate that. Now, what makes you uncomfortable with the five eighty-five a month? Well, I had a friend that paid less than that. 
Okay. And other than your friend paying less, is there any other reasons that you're uncomfortable it, with it? It's probably a little bit more than I plan to spend. Okay. So other than your friend paying less and the fact that it doesn't fit in with, I guess, your budget. Exactly. Um, is there any other reasons that you're uncomfortable with $585 a month? No. Okay. Well, what I would like to do is go through each one of those individually, if that's okay with you. Sure. So let's talk about your friend. Now, does he buy GS? Yeah, definitely got a GS. He got it in here, in fact. Okay. Same model year? Same. Yeah, he got it within the last month. Okay, great. Um, do you remember the package? Is it exactly the same package that we were looking at? Um, I'm pretty sure it's the same package. Okay. Do you remember what his down payment was? No, I wouldn't, wouldn't know. In term? Wouldn't know. Okay. But he did buy it here. Yeah, he got it here. His name's John Smith. John Smith. Okay, because what I can do, since he did buy it here, if it's okay with you, I can actually go and pull his deal. I'm not going to obviously share any pertinent information with you, any um, privileged information, sure. but I can pull his deal and give you an idea of if his term was more or if his down payment was larger or anything like that. So would that work for you? Sure. Okay, so give me a second and let me go grab his deal. Okay. Michael, I have John Smith's folder here from his deal, yes. and I'm um, just looking at this, and from what I can tell, his, first of all, you're looking at a 48-month contract. His actually was for 60 months. Okay. And he actually did put down more money than you're currently putting down. So I think that would explain the difference between that his payment, payment being down. a little bit less. Okay. So, but once again, let me just leave this over here. So now you mentioned that other than your friend, you mentioned the fact that also you had some budget issues. Yeah, it's still a little bit more than I had planned to spend. Okay. What are you currently paying for your vehicle? Um, the rover is four seventy-five a month. Okay, so four seventy-five a month. And let me ask you, what type of gas mileage do you get on that? Uh, I, I tracked that pretty well, so it's, it's probably about eighteen. Eighteen miles per gallon. Well, on the GS, you actually should be getting about twenty-three miles to the gallon. Right. Um, so you know, once again, a sedan versus an SUV. Yes. Now, if you take into account, you mentioned earlier you drive probably about fifteen hundred miles a month. Yes. So if you look at current gas prices, which unfortunately aren't going down. Right. Just in fuel savings, you'd be saving about $55 a month by having the GS as opposed to the 2003 Discovery. Okay. Now, do you remember over the last year or so, how much have you spent on repairs on that vehicle? Um, probably 900 and change, a little bit less than 1,000. Okay. So doing some rough math, that's about $75 a month. R right. Okay. So if you take the 475 that you're paying a month now and add $75 to it, you're actually at $550 a month. Yeah, but that's still less than the 585. However, remember we talked about $55 in savings from gas, so actually it sure. ends up being even a better deal. Right. Okay. So can you understand now where from a budget standpoint actually 585 would be less money than what you're paying now? And I'd be driving a newer car. Exactly. Right. So okay. Can we go ahead and do the paperwork? Sure. Great. Well, thank you, Michael. You're welcome. In this role play, the customer objected to my payment. Hopefully you noticed the two reasons for the objection. First, he said his friend paid less, and then he said it was more than he budgeted. I uncovered both reasons before I started to resolve either one. I also confirmed with the customer that I had both reasons by stating those reasons in my own words. I then went about gathering information from the customer using my questioning skills. The questions I asked were asked with the end in mind, meaning, I knew how I was going to resolve these reasons before I started asking the questions. Once I gathered information from the customer about his reasons, I then went about resolving them. In regards to the customer's budget reason, I used questions to educate the customer. I was able to get the customer to understand that he would actually be paying less money per month with a new car than he would if he kept his old vehicle. I did this by asking him questions that made him come to the realization that the new car fit his budget. I would like to show you one more role play. This one involves a customer who is unhappy with the number I offered him for his trade. Notice that he has several reasons for his objection. Watch how I use questions to first uncover the reason behind the objection and then use questions to gather information from the customer that will help me resolve his reasons. Great news, Mike. My manager has informed me that the value of your vehicle is $13,100. I'm not too happy with that. Well, Michael, if you don't see the value in what we have to offer you for your trade, we would never expect you to take advantage of it. Fair enough? That, that's fair. So what makes you uncomfortable with $13,100? Uh, I think the truck's probably worth about $15,000. I assume you did some research to come to that conclusion. So what research did you do? I went to Kelly's Blue Book online. 
Okay, you went to Kelly's Blue Book online. Other than Kelly's, did you do any other research? I had an offer from the Cadillac dealer the other day when I was looking at another car, and uh, I saw a similar ad to mine at a Volvo dealer. Okay, so you went to Kelly's Blue Book and you got a different, and you saw a number different than fifth, not different than thirteen thousand one hundred dollars. Yes, the Cadillac dealer gave you an offer, Correct. and you went to, and you saw an ad in the vote on a Volvo from a Volvo dealer. You saw right. an ad. Okay, yes, all right. All right. Were there any other than those three things? Is there any other reason that you're uncomfortable with our number? No. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do, Michael, is okay with you, is to go through each one of those particular objections that you have. Is sure. That okay. All mm -hmm. right. Well, let's start with Kelly's Blue Books. That's the first one that came up here. Now, when you went to Kelly's Blue Book, what information did you put into the screen? I put the year, the make, the model. Uh, I think they had, they had an equipment checkoff list. I went through that. Okay. 